Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. We got some more Seahawks stuff to talk about. And this one should be exciting for a lot of you guys because I see the people in my comments. I see the people in my stream chats. I know what you guys are buzzing about. I know what you guys are interested to see. So I'm going to give the people what they want and we're going to talk a little bit about Stone Forsyth. And the reason for that is not just because he finally got to play last week and that he played fairly well. It is possible that he plays this Sunday in Houston. As you can see, we're taking a look at this injury report as of now, because we don't have the Friday, Friday injury report yet, because they haven't practiced yet. Uh, Brandon Shell did not practice Wednesday or Thursday, so... As of right now, it seems a reasonable assumption to make that Shell is not going to play against the Texans. And honestly, given the fact that it is the Texans, a lot of these players are probably not going to play because we should be able to win anyway because it is the Texans. And if you're on the fence at all as a player on whether or not you can go, then this is probably the game to skip. So... Brandon Shell, who got injured against the 49ers and was replaced by Stone Forsyth for the end of that game, looks like he's not going to be able to go. So we're probably going to see a little more Forsyth. So I want to talk about the significance of the ability to see what Forsyth has to offer over these last five games. I want to talk about how it could completely change the dichotomy of this offseason. I want to talk about how it could convince me of some things that I am currently not convinced on. So, first of all, the, the first part of this is how Forsyth played against the 49ers. Because I came into this season believing that Forsyth was an interesting prospect who I was optimistic on and I believed could be part of a... NFL roster going forward, but I believed he was not going to be ready as a rookie, and I didn't really expect him to do anything as a rookie, and if he did, it was probably not going to be very pretty. However, he went out there against the 49ers, and uh, Corbin Smith broke it down like this a few days ago on Twitter. Forsyth didn't give up a pressure on any of his six pass pro snaps. Five of those came against Bosa. Travis Homer came in to help on one of them, but the rookie wasn't was not beat on the play. So, too long, didn't read. Forsyth, good. <laughs> now, it is a small sample size, but it's a promising start for a guy who I didn't expect to be able to hang with a guy like Bosa in his first NFL action. And Forsyth, he projects to be a really good pass protector. This is something that me and the Hawks Nest talked about yesterday in our stream. Um, he projects to be a very capable pass protector, which is why he's much more of a left tackle than a right tackle. Uh, not a whole lot of potential as a run blocker, but we'll get into that a little more as we go on here. So, Stone Forsyth looks like he's got a little more wiggle to his waggle than I thought he would in this, his rookie season. And even though he would be playing out of position at right tackle, even though that's not his best spot, even though it's not what you really want from Stone because you know where his talents lay, I will take him getting some experience. I will take him getting some experience because he'll still have opportunities to work on his pass protection and maybe develop a little more competency as a run blocker. And more than that, I want to see if it's believable that Stone Forsyth could be the heir apparent to Dwayne Brown. Because right now, as of right now, my assumption with Stone Forsyth is he's going to be quality depth. He's going to be a capable backup. Somebody who can fill in at left tackle and in a pinch, maybe right tackle in the future if the starters get hurt. And that's fine. He's a sixth round pick. You don't expect your sixth round picks to always become good starters. But <clears throat> follow me through here. What if Stone Forsyth could be more than that? What if he could be more than that next year? 
And when I say more than that, I want to be clear about something. I'm not interested in a bad starter. If Stone Forsythe is going to be the 25th best left tackle in the league, I'm not interested in that. That kind of thinking is a large part of the reason why we are here right now, because we didn't go out to get players that were really good. We thought we could live with guys who were okay, below average, maybe even kind of bad. We thought we could get by on the offensive line. That's a big part of the reason why we're here right now. I don't want to do that. But what if Stone Forsythe could be legitimately good? And what if he could be the kind of first volley in a new era of offensive football for the Seahawks? Because if you take a look at the current Seahawks roster, it seems to me that there is something that kind of needs to happen anyway. And if you decide to earmark Stone Forsythe as the left tackle of the future as a starter, then that's another step in that direction. So... I'm looking at the Seahawks roster right now going into this offseason. DK Metcalf probably going to be here next year on a monster extension. Tyler Lockett already got his extension. He's going to be here next year. He's making a lot of money. Dwayne Eskridge, not on a big money contract yet, but you did use a second round pick on him. So that's a lot of capital being put into your receivers. Okay, Lockett was a third round pick. Metcalf was a second round pick while you're at it. And, and of course, Eskridge second round pick. And then the money you have invested in that position, Metcalf and Lockett combined are going to be making probably north of $20 million against the cap next year. And that's going to escalate very quickly. Meanwhile, if you look in the backfield, what do we have at running back? What are we going to have at running back next year? Chris Carson's career is probably over. I, I think it should be anyway. Rashad Penny's career probably should be over, too, for slightly different reasons. Uh, Alex Collins is a free agent. Uh, okay, so we've got DJ Dallas. We've got uh, Travis Homer, a pure third down back. Uh, Josh Johnson. Yeah, it, it's, it's hairy, right? And obviously we're going to bring in guys, but the odds are good that you're not going to have some... Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, or, <clears throat> God, even a Philip Lindsay level of running back next year. You're not going to have a bell cow. And honestly, unless you really dedicate your offseason to it, you're probably not even going to have a good platoon. Maybe you go get a guy like Mike Davis and bring him back, but I don't think the backfield is going to be great next year right now. It's it's so thin and so messed up right now. I don't see how you can recover in one offseason. And the run blocking, as it is right now, is kind of a disaster. Like, our, our pass protection is starting to break down a little bit, I think. Our, our, our pass blocking is getting worse, but the run blocking is just... Our run blocking has become worse than our pass blocking, which is crazy, because like uh, we were talking about in the Hawks Nest stream yesterday, we prioritize run blocking when we build our offensive line. So, building this team run first doesn't seem to me to be very practical right now. It goes against the distribution of talent and resources we have on this offense right now. I I don't see how you're going to be able to build a dominant running game in uh, 2022. It, there's not going to be enough time. The running back is probably not going to be there. So I think you kind of got to go pass first. That's where the talent is. That's where the That's where you invested into. So you got to become one of these pass-first teams, kind of like maybe what the Cowboys are doing, where they pass the ball a lot, but they still use a lot of play action to provide the threat of running the ball. So if you go to that, then a guy like Stone Forsythe starting becomes a little more possible. It becomes at least, you, you can open the door to it because his strength is pass blocking. You can live with him not being a very good run blocker because you're going to be running the ball a little less. You're going to decide to go all out with a more spread-based attack. You're going to go all out with letting Wilson throw the ball a lot. And you're going to find ways to supplement that so you don't get bogged down like we did last year when we tried to do that and teams figured it out and we never had a counterpunch. So... <clears throat> If Stone Forsythe can be that guy, this offseason gets a lot easier. 
That's why this is such a big deal. That's why I want to see what he can do, and I want to see if it becomes at least viable. And I'm going to say it again. I don't want to cut corners with building this offensive line anymore. We've been doing that for too long. That's why we're here right now. We do have to be willing to invest heavily into this offensive line. But knowing who we have at head coach and GM, knowing we don't do things like that, how much nicer would it be if we went into this offseason thinking, okay, we don't have to give Toronto Armstead $100 million. We can give it to Forsyth, and he's going to be a really good pass protector and a lackluster run blocker, but it's okay because we're going to be passing the ball more. We're going to uh, maybe go to more... We're, we're going to keep developing this short passing attack to kind of replace the running game. And we're going to use a lot of play action to offset the fact that we're not running the ball as much and still getting value out of play action because analytics show that play action works well even when you don't run the ball well. So... <clears throat> That makes this offseason much easier. Now, instead of spending $100 million on a Teron Armstead, you can focus on getting a better center, uh, getting a better right tackle, and then the money that you save on bringing in a guy like Armstead, who is probably going to legitimately be a nine-figure player, can be spent on things like maybe you can bring in a more competent running back not not a Derrick Henry you can't get those guys but maybe you could get like a Philip Lindsay level running back maybe you could spend a little more on the defense because we know Carroll likes that stuff and suddenly it's a little easier to imagine keeping Wilson this offseason okay i've said in previous videos that the problem with keeping Russell Wilson doesn't really have that much to do with Wilson it has to do with the fact that we don't have time to build a roster around him because things are too messed up. But things are a lot less messed up if Stone Forsyth can step up and be the dude going forward. So, to Carroll, to uh, Waldron, to Solari, let the kid play. I'll see you guys later on. Peace out, go Hawks. Let me know what you think down below.